Hello, my name is Caitlin Diefenbrock. I'm a biology major from Southwest Baptist University. Today I'm going to be sharing research that I've been a part of for the past two years. I, along with several peers, have been researching various projects around the effects of stress induced on cattle through the weaning process. Today I am specifically going to be presenting my concentrated study on the evaluation of stress behavior in the method of weaning in cattle. Traditionally, calves are weaned by separation from their mothers at five to six months of age. Studies have shown that the weaning process is a stress-inducing situation, and this stress relate, releases through cortisol has been linked to temperament and behavior in cattle. The manifestations of this stress can be seen in a decrease of food and water intake, and also an alteration of time spent sitting and standing. Along with a stress response, you can see an increase in both pacing and bellowing. So those are just physical behaviors that are seen to be manifestations of the stress that they experience through the weaning process. The purpose of this study is to determine a method of weaning that will decrease the stress response in cattle. This will be done by evaluating three different groups of cattle in order to determine if the use of a nose flap will decrease the stress response in the calves during the weaning process. If we are able to change the weaning technique and decrease the stress calves experience, this could decrease the stress that will um, increase health and well-being of both the cattle and the ranch. For the method of this experiment, we use nine cows total in three different test groups. Group one was the traditionally weaned group, which means that they were completely separated from their mothers. Now, if you see in this photo up here, um, in the upper corner, you can see this yellow nose flap. So that is what was put in the traditionally weaned cows just to prevent them from being to, able to feed off of the other mothers from other groups that were present in the same corral. So traditional weaned means that they were completely separated from their mothers and unable to feed off of them and unable to feed off of any other mothers either. So then the second group was our nose flap or experimental group. Um, so this you can see in this picture here, we had a green nose flap. Now these nose flaps are non-piercing, so they go through the nose, but they do not pierce the septum there. Um, and it just prevents them from being able to feed off their mothers. But the nose flap group, um, experimental group, they are able to stay in close contact. Like you can see here, the calf is able to be up against the mother and have that comfort of being in contact with their mother, but are unable to feed. And then our third group was the control group. And in the control group, they were just left with their mothers and they didn't have a nose flap, so they were still able to feed off of their mothers. And so there were three cows in each of these groups and the, their behavior was videoed for five minutes um, around feeding time each day. But the video was done from a distance so that human interaction was not a factor. And so it was five minutes of video and then those videos were evaluated for different stress behaviors like pacing, vocalization, eating, and other behaviors like sitting or standing. So now I'm gonna just play a short video clip of what type of behaviors we recorded. So these are the videos that we had those five minutes each day. And then from that, we just recorded the behavior we saw and the vocalizations we saw. So hopefully in that, you guys were able to hear the bellowing. Um, so those are the vocalizations that are often found when a calf is experiencing stress. Um, also, if you noticed in the back, you can see up against that fence that there were some calves pacing on the fence on this side, and then also on the other side of the fence, those would have been their mothers that are also pacing that fence. But closer to the camera, you can see that the cows there were just grazing and eating feed and seem pretty chill to just standing there. So that again is just a sample of the videos that we um, recorded and then from that we recorded our behavioral data.
So the recorded behavioral data, um, we have done this for two years now, so the fall of 2019 and the fall of 2020. So this is um, uh, an example of data from the fall of 2019. If you look, you can see on the left side of the chart, there is the different groups and the different calves that were in each group. And so for five days, we recorded their physical activity and their eating. And the common themes that we saw were that the traditional were found to be pacing the fence across from their mothers and they rarely touched any food. Um, the nose flap groups were found to stand next to their mothers and to even eat next to their mothers. And the control group was mostly nursing and standing next to their mothers with some eating feed as the days progressed. Um, so this was what was seen for all five days, um, but this is just a sample of one day. And then we have the same type of data recorded um, for the fall of 2020. And this is just broken into the three groups overall, what we saw each day. So the traditional, the nose flap, and then the control again. And again, we just looked at what physical activity they were doing and then also were they eating were they not eating um, and so we saw similar themes where the traditional was pacing the fence and vocalizing and then not touching any food where the nose flap group was standing next to their mothers and even on day one they started to eat um, actual food and then the control was standing next to their mothers and um, feeding off of their mothers and then even sometimes um, they would touch the feed that was available So along with just general physical behaviors that were recorded, we also recorded the average number of vocalizations that each group had during that five minute period. And we put these into the graphs that you see below. So the data collected in 2019 and 2020, we did the average vocalizations for each year. Um, so if you look at the graphs, you'll see on the y-axis, that is the average number of vocalizations for those five minutes. And it goes from zero to 25. So we even got up to um, the average being close to 24 for one day, the first day there. And then on the x-axis, that is the day. So we recorded this for the first five days of the weaning process. Um, and that's for both graphs. So when you look at these, you'll see um, the blue diamond line is the traditional group. So that again, they were removed from their mothers. And then the orange with squares is the control group. So they were not weaned. And then the gray with triangles is the experimental no slap group. Um, these vocalization graphs show that the traditional group had a greater average of vocalizations that slowly tapered off. And um, so you can see that like by day two, the calves in the traditional group were um, kind of experiencing between 20 and like 25 the first two days of the weaning process. And then that slowly declined. And even we noted that by day two, the calves in the traditional group were actually going hoarse from the large amounts of vocalizations during that weaning process. And the volume of the vocalizations can actually be heard from about a mile away. So these are pretty strong vocalizations and signs of stress that they're experiencing. And so when you look at fall of 2019, you can see that the blue, the traditional, will slowly taper off by day five. But then if you look at the control and the nose flap, which again is the experimental group, they had next to none, um, no vocalizations throughout that five days, uh, except for day four, they had one. And that's really interesting to note that they acted very similarly. Um, again, when you look at fall of 2020, we notice a similar trend of very high average number of vocalizations for the traditional group, but then again, tapers off by about day five. And then for the control and the nose slap, we see again that they stayed below five each day, um, just showing very little stress. So this is an inclusion of some cortisol statistics that we were running at the same time. So we actually did blood draws from each of the calves during the weaning process in order to test the blood cortisol concentration. Um, and cortisol, again, is that stress hormone. So we wanted to compare um, and see how much stress hormone they were, like was present in each calf, and then look again at the physical behavioral response of stress as well. So if you look at the um, first graph up at the top, you can see um, right here. So this is cortisol levels. So we did blood draws from the calves. And this is um, 
run through NELISA protocol to determine the concentration of the stress hormone cortisol that's present in each calf. And then the samples are recorded in picograms per deciliter. Um, so these graphs actually show similar peaks in cortisol levels. So if you look here around day three, um, this is the traditional, is this red color here. Um, and so you can kind of see that as the weaning process occurs, they experience a greater amount of stress cortisol level here, and then again tapers off around day five. And that is similar to what we saw even in their vocalization. So as the weaning process started, they experienced more vocalizations on day two, day three, just like the increase in cortisol levels, and then it slowly tapered off. And then if you look at the control and the nose flap group, the blue and green here, you can see that the cortisol levels stay pretty similar to each other and also pretty constant across the graph. Similarly, you see that same reaction in the vocalizations. They're pretty constant and similar to each other, both control and nose flap groups. So the traditional had a significantly higher average of vocalizations, which again is that sign of stress along with the pacing and the lack of feeding. The nose flap group was similar to the unweaned control group, which means that the experimental group exhibited as little stress behavior as if they had not even been weaned. The increase in stress activity observed in the traditionally weaned calves, coupled with a decrease in the caloric intake, will cause a reduction in weight. It can affect the health of the cattle and decrease the immune function. It can also have a large monetary impact on the ranch as the price per head decreases as weight decreases. We have observed that traditionally weaned calves can lose upwards of five pounds per day across the first five days of the weaning process. Based off of the behavioral data we collected over the past two years, it can be concluded that the use of a nose flap for weaning greatly decreases the stress response and makes the process significantly smoother with calves eating food shortly after being weaned. For the future of this study, we have received funding to purchase an electronic scale, which will help us be able to record the weight gain and weight loss between the different groups. We will also still be looking at the impact of the stress on the immune system and how that affects their um, health and well-being. I would like to thank uh, my peers who also participated in this research. I would also like to thank Dr. Murphy for his leadership in this research project. I would also like to thank my university, Southwest Baptist University, for the opportunity to participate in research like this. Lastly, I would like to say a thank you to Sigma Zeta for providing funding to make this experiment possible. Thank you very much.